In this video, we're going to learn how to add a professional signature to the bottom of all of your Gmail messages. That includes a picture of yourself or a logo of your company, all of the social media icons, email, phone number, everything you'd want in a professional signature. To get started, go to your Google Gmail account, then click in the gear icon in the upper right corner and select see all settings. We're going to stick on the general tab and scroll all the way down till we find the signature area. By default, you have no signatures, so we're going to click create new to create our new signature. Give your signature a name and click create. The editor inside of Google Gmail is very simple and doesn't really allow you to create a more complex one. If you want to do something very simple such as this, but to create a more professional one with icons and pictures and such, you're going to need something a little more complex. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Google Docs to format our signature, copy it from Google Docs and paste it into our Gmail editor. To do that, we're going to open up a new tab and from the apps launcher in the upper right corner, we're going to select Google Drive. From here, add a new Google Doc and we're going to format our signature using a table inside of Google Doc. Click on Insert, mouse over to Table, and select 2 by one In the left-hand side, we're going to put a picture of ourselves, or you could put a logo. And in the right-hand side, we're going to put all of our contact information. You'll see that when I typed in the website address, it automatically converted this to a website link. My email address didn't quite figure that out. So I'm going to highlight over my email address, and then I'm going to click on the insert link icon. We're going to put the words mail to colon before the email address like this. Mail to colon and then my email address. And then click apply. I'm going to add a row of social media icons. For this demo I'm going to use these icons that I found from flaticon.com. You may have your own icons or you may want to search up your own. To insert these I drag until I see the cursor where I want it and then release it there. Obviously this is way too big. We're going to resize this image. Click the image, then click format, mouse over image, and then select image options. That will open up the image options panel along the right hand side. And then I'm going to expand the size and rotation. And here I'm going to change it from 4.89 inches to 0.25 inches. And that gives me an icon that's much more reasonably sized. I'm going to repeat that for the rest of these icons, just dragging them where I want them. And then using the image options panel to change them to 0.25 inches and resizing all of my icons to create a row of social media icons. Now I want to put a little space in between these. So I'm going to put my cursor using my arrow key. I'm going to put the cursor in between them and just add a couple spaces. Excellent. So now I have my social media row. I can click on each icon and then using the insert link button, I can copy and paste the link to my social media page. Uh, and then repeat that for each of these with them leading to whatever page you want the reader to visit. Now that I have my contact information set up, I'm going to use this photo uh, for my left hand side. Instead of using a picture of yourself, you could also use a logo for your company. Now if I drag this into the left cell there, I want to modify this photo slightly. I want to have nice rounded edges instead of these pointed sharp edges. To do that, I'm going to use another tool called Google Drawing to format it so I have a nice rounded edges. So I'm going to remove that photo. I'm going to return to my Google Drive. I'm going to click New mouse over more and then select Google Drawings. From here I'm going to drag in my photo that I had before and I'm going to move this photo so that the photo is up against the top and the left side of the canvas. Then I'm going to take the bottom right hand corner and I'm going to drag it to match the size of my photo. And now that I have the canvas matching the photo size, I click the photo and then where I have the crop image icon up here at the top, there's a drop down arrow. Hit that drop down arrow, mouse over shapes, and here if you want to create like a round uh, profile photo, click the oval icon, and that'll make it rounded. Uh, or we can do what I want to do here and make it a rounded rectangle. So here I have a nice rounded rectangle. All the edges are kind of rounded instead of sharp. And you'll see that this kind of like checkered white and gray background. That's a transparent area. Now I have the picture formatted the way I want. I'm going to click on the title in the upper left hand corner and rename this picture. Now I'm going to download this file to use it in my Google Doc. Click File, select Download, and then select PNG. We want a PNG instead of a JPEG because it'll preserve the transparent corners. If we download it as a JPEG, these will be all changed into white instead of transparent. So here's my photo. I'm going to go back to my Google Doc. 
and I'm going to drag that photo into the left cell of my signature. I can see it's a little bit bigger than I want, so I can click it and use the blue handlebars to resize it slightly. And I'm going to drag this a little bit just to resize it and make it match. So we're very close to it being done. The next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of these borders. So I'm going to right click on the table and then from the menu select table properties. On the properties I'm going to expand color and I'm going to change the border from one point to zero points. And that gets rid of the border. I want to bring back that line that's in between the picture and the text. So I'm going to click that line just to select that line. And I'm going to bring back the width. So in the border width button, I'm going to change that from 0 to 1.5 to make a nice somewhat thick line. And now we have my formatted photo. I'm going to rename this Google Doc to uh, something more relevant. Our signature is almost formatted. Next thing I want to do is change the font a little bit. So I'm going to highlight the text of my contact information. And from the drop down box, I'm going to pick a font that I like. Then I'm going to change my name to be a little bit bigger. So now I have my name, the website name, and all my contact information using a nice consistent font. One thing I want to note, when you're picking a font, remember that the font you have on your computer may not match the installed fonts on the person reading your emails. So you don't want to pick a nice fancy font that only works on your computer. You want to use what's called a web safe font. So here I'm going to put a list of the fonts that you want to use. Generally they're the more common ones that are on pretty much everybody's computer. And the benefit of using that font is you know that whoever is reading your email is going to be able to see the same font that you're using. It just creates a more consistent experience. So now that I have my signature ready to go, I'm going to copy and paste it into Google Gmail. To copy this, I'm going to click Edit and then click Select All. Now that everything is selected, I'm going to click Edit, click Copy. You can also use the Control C hotkey to copy this. Go back to your Gmail and remove the plain signature. And from here, right click, Paste, or Control V to paste your fancy signature. You'll see that I brought over all the formatting, all the text, all the links, everything that you had in the Google Doc is now here. Now that we have your signature formatted, we have a couple different options for when and how to use your signature. For your signature defaults, whenever you create a new email, you can decide which signature to use. You can also decide if you want to include your signature at the bottom of reply to or forwarded emails. Usually I use my signature on new emails, but I omit the signature on reply all or forwarded emails just because it adds a lot to the body of the emails if you have a long email chain. I also do use this uh, insert signature before quoted text um, just because it, it gets rid of that double line at the bottom, which again takes a lot of extra space in emails once you get really long email chains. But go ahead and play around that option. After you have your signature all set up, scroll all the way to the bottom and click Save Changes. Uh, don't forget that last step, otherwise you have to redo all of this. Now when we click Compose, we find that our professional signature is now inserted at the bottom of our emails. So that was the walkthrough for how to create your professional signature. I knew through a lot at you with creating profile photos and, and using Google Docs to create and format your, your signature. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. Thanks for watching. Let me know if I can help.